Hello everyone, this is Golfku from Magical Noob and today we're giving you an achievement guide for all 50 achievements in Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 4. Welcome to Storm 4's Achievement Overview. Achievement overview. For this video, because I play the game on the PlayStation 4, we're going to use the trophies. But if you're playing the game on the Xbox One or Steam, the achievements are exactly the same and the methods should not change. If you want to skip to a specific achievement, check the description below. We have time links to ease your navigation. We'll begin by going into free battle. If you have two controllers, go to versus mode and select player versus player. Team battle, three rounds. If you don't have two controllers, don't worry, it's still possible, just a bit trickier to do. Just go to player versus computer and set the difficulty to super easy. For your team, pick Hinata with Naruto as a support. For your opponent's team, it really doesn't matter what you pick. As soon as the battle starts, you can execute Hinata's Jutsu right next to the enemy, which will give you a 64 hit combo, way more than you need for attacking is the greatest defense. Have your opponent charge at you and connect with a counter attack. You can do this by holding down R2 and pressing the square button. If you time it correctly, you'll get masterful timing. Next, execute your ultimate jutsu with Hinata, followed by your ultimate jutsu with Naruto. By doing this, you will have connected with all the ultimate jutsu of your team members in a single battle. Next, we're going to initiate a combo with either one of the characters. While we're doing the combo, flick the right stick to the right or the left, so Hinata comes in and follows up with that combo. This will immediately unlock the possibilities of the next strike. Next, we need to fill up that storm gauge that yellow bar below the chakra bar. You can do this by dealing damage, receiving damage or using your supports. But you really don't want to take damage because of another achievement that we're going for. So, deal as much damage as you can to the enemy without killing him and after that just run around switching characters which will fill up that storm gauge. After it's full, triple tap that triangle and hit circle and you will perform a linked secret technique. Secret techniques are ultimate jutsu in the previous game, which is why I'm saying ultimate jutsu a lot. Make sure you see that message on the left side saying secret technique finished chance that means the opponent will die once you land the combination jutsu if you do this correctly you will get dancing to the same beat you'll also get unscathed because you didn't take any damage during the battle you'll get perfect win because you won a three round battle without losing a single round and then you can simply hit retry because we're going for other achievements on this second battle just finish the opponent off in the first round and take him really really low within the second round after you've dealt enough damage fill up that storm gauge again by switching your characters over and over and also pick up player 2's controller and deal some damage to your main character to the point where you can awaken once the storm gauge is full and you've received enough damage so you're able to awaken charge up that chakra and your whole team will go into awakening mode this is called a linked awakening finish off your opponent while in this state and you'll get both forbidden power release and full power teamwork the only achievement we're missing here in the versus mode is personal strength release this is very similar to person strength's max out, which we did already. The only difference being, you cannot do this with a combination ultimate jutsu. So, just finish your opponent with a regular ultimate jutsu and we can move on. Still in free battle, we're going to the very first option at the top, survival mode. In survival mode, there are two types of survival that you can pick. The first one is ability cap, the second one is ultimate survival. Let's start with ultimate survival. The achievement is to simply get past 30 opponents in this game mode. Because it is a survival mode, you won't necessarily start with full health on every fight. But your health will regenerate at the end of each round, depending on how fast you took down your enemy and your rank at the end of the fight. This is probably the toughest achievement of the game, so pick a character that you're comfortable with, and also you can choose between team battle or single battle, so pick whichever one you're more, most comfortable with. Next, we're gonna take a look at the achievements on ability cap survival. Once you select this option, you'll be able to do the beginner level of ability cap. After defeating three enemies, you'll unlock the next event, in which you have to defeat three more, and then the next event, which you have once again to defeat three enemies. Once you do these three events, you'll have completed the beginner level of ability cap survival and unlocked the intermediate level. Repeat this process on the intermediate level, you'll unlock the advanced, complete the advanced and all these three achievements are yours. The same goes for the challenge league. On the free battle menu, go down to league and select challenge league. Once again, you can pick between single battle or team battle, as well as the number of rounds on each fight. Complete the beginner, intermediate and advanced for all these three achievements. Next up, we're going into story mode and story mode is just phenomenal guys I love this so much that I would just recommend you guys play it from beginning to end without worrying with achievements We'll worry about them once you finish the story as you complete each chapter You'll get an achievement. There are five chapters, which means there are five achievements The rest of the achievements in 
story mode are all related to the rank. You need to get an S rank on each single fight. Fortunately, the menu is really good at telling you which missions you have completed with an S rank and which ones you haven't. So it's really easy to just go around and pick the ones that you still need to complete. There are two main factors that influence your S rank. One is the health that you have. You gotta keep it above that 90%. And the second one is the quick time events. Once again, keep it above the 90% and you should be fine. There are a total of 25 achievements related to the S rank, which is half the number of total achievements in this game. Most of the achievements are here in story mode, and this is probably where you'll spend most of your time. But story mode is super fun as well, so I can't see this being a big sacrifice at all. The final achievements can be obtained in adventure mode. There are only two of them. The first one, Trail of the Gale Expert, it simply requires you to complete the main missions. If you go to event details, it's that line that goes down the middle, the orange events. You simply go from place to place, do a couple of fights, just follow the arrow on the map and you'll be good. Trail of the Gale Master requires you to complete all the sub-events, which, once again, if you go to event details, are the ones on the top and the bottom, the blue ones. Now, some of these you have to tackle one by one, just doing whatever the characters want you to do, but there are at least three that you should keep in mind while playing the rest of the missions. Guy's Quest requires you to travel all around the world fighting 10 different challenges. These challenges are hot-blooded ninjas that take you into a fight, where the odds are stacked against you. Once you complete the 10 fights, you're good to go. Ebisu Sensei has a list of 50 ninja tasks, but out of this 50 ninja tasks, you only need to complete 15. These are basically just doing stuff out in the world, helping out people, destroying pots, destroying boxes, destroying leaves, destroying posters, simply taking steps out in the open world. There's really a big number of activities, and 15 is really not that much if you know which ones to pick. You can see the full list in the options menu, as well as track your progress. For this mission, basically just destroy everything you see, keep an eye out for destructible objects, and once you finish all the other missions, you'll see that the number of tasks that you still need to complete isn't that high anymore. And the last one you should be keeping an eye out for is Killer B's quest. Killer B is making a new rap and he needs the memory crystals to, for inspiration. All of these are marked on your map, so they're pretty easy to find, as well as when you go all the way out to the hub menu where you can see all the villages you can also see how many crystals there are in each section you need to collect all of them every single one there are like 54 i believe and then bring them back to killer v you don't need to complete them you don't need to do the fights within the memory crystals you just need to collect them and yeah all the other events are simple tasks that you just need to follow the instructions on screen do all this and you'll become the perfect storm master that platinum is all yours and that concludes this achievement overview, guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll be reading all of them and trying to help you as best as I can. Also, if this video was useful, click that like button. It helps me out a lot. It's a simple click for you. There's no reason not to do it. And if you want more gaming goodness, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I've been Globku. Boy. Boy.